Hi, welcome. This is Health Matters with me, Dishan Kumar, and today we are in Nexus Bangsa South to talk about something you may already know about, breast cancer. Now, breast cancer is an issue in Malaysia and also in the world, and uh, Health Matters has always been about perspectives. So today, I will be bringing you two different perspectives. One is from a physician's point of view, and another one is from a survivor of breast cancer. So join me in today's episode. This is Health Matters with me, Dishan Kumar. Today's topic, breast cancer. Today with me, we have Dr. Dr. M. Devanan. Thank you, Dr. for joining us today. Okay, um, now let's start off with a very general thing, I think, for anybody who's watching right now. Um, what classifies as breast cancer? Uh, any change in the breast, basically. Any change in the breast which is not normal. Mm -hmm. uh, as much as we know, 90% of women will have some form of lumps in the breast uh, at some stage of their life, from the age of 12 to the age of old age. But when the lump starts to change character, by definition, it would more likely be a cancer. Okay. So uh, while we see cancer uh, as a non-entity in the past, but it has been there since Napoleon days, mm. basically. Uh, in fact, Napoleon's sister also had breast cancer when she passed away at the age of 38. Mm. So the essence is cancer is about a change in the breast, and the cancer comes out at a point of time, always at the prime of our life. So lumps in breast is normal. Absolutely, 90% mm. of lumps in the breast are completely harmless, mm. completely harmless. So we are always trying to encourage women that do not be afraid about the lumps that is present in the breast because many a time they are truly harmless. So why fear a harmless lump? Just come, see a doctor, get an understanding. Mm. The most important part is about getting to understand what the lumps are all about. Okay. Now, you have been in this line for a very, very long time. Yes. What, uh, what is the current situation now in Malaysia um, and the world for breast cancer? Uh, if we take simple statistics, we will not get complicated by statistics, mm -hmm. but statistics guide us. Say, if you take from the WHO report of 2012, we had about 1.7 million new breast cancer cases. Right? Of that, almost 400,000 are in Asia. Wow. And if you talk about Asia, almost like 185,000 in China, another 56,000 in Japan. We take the countries are well developed mm. versus again Indonesia, which has got about another 50,000 breast cancers. But the issue that strikes us most basically is whereas in China and Japan, the number of women who die of breast cancer is only about 25%. Whereas in Indonesia, it's about almost 50%. Now, coming back to our country, in Malaysia, in 2012, WHO projected that we would have about 5,400 cases. Mm -hmm. We do not have an accurate sort of registry in the country, but okay. nonetheless, those are coming in perspective. Mm -hmm. But as of last week, WHO projected, as in 2018, we will to have at least 7,593 women with breast cancer. That is a steep increase of almost 50%. Mm. Uh, and that is very frightening because that means whatever we have been doing, either through the process of Ministry of Health, through the process of NGOs, education, seminars, there are still a huge number of women with breast cancer. Now, what is striking about the cancer in Malaysia and why the high death rate? almost 42% of our women come in stage 3 and stage 4. That's too late. So it goes to show mm. that in spite of whatever the media is doing, in spite of the so-called high-tech iPhones that we have, the iPad, the computer, the so-called YouTube and so on and so forth, we still have women who are afraid to come out and present themselves for examination or early examination to detect breast cancer. Mm. So in Malaysia, we still have figures that is frightening, although the numbers may not be that high compared to the 40,000 cancers across, but breast cancer is number one in female. Mm. So, and again, in this country, most cancers are seen below the age of 49. That means the young mothers. Mm. The young mothers. 
Alright, um, now we have to talk about uh, the cause for this. Now, you said that uh, it's prevalent, people are getting it more, there's an increase of 50%, more than 50%. Yes. What causes breast cancer? To be accurate, we do not know the cause. But across the board, we do know that 30% of cancers are known as a result of either because of alcohol. Age is one factor, basically. Whether it's got to do with diet, we still don't know. Mm. We have got 5-8% to 8 of women who have got family history of breast cancer. That means mother breast cancer, daughter breast cancer, and or the next of kin, grandmother cancer. So that's a familial type breast cancer. Now, the others we don't know. Also, literally almost 70% of women who get breast cancer, we have no known factors. Mm. The small percentage is familial are the so-called BRCA1, the Burka1 and Burka2. Those are the genetics. Mm -hmm. But that requires a bit of blood test to identify. Okay. So 70% of those women who get breast cancer, we still don't know. So there may be some kind of genes that is obviously seen, uh, not identified yet, yet, as of today. But isn't that very interesting, not even very interesting because there's a lot of questions because medical uh, terms and medical industry, the technology, it's, it, there's a lot. Absolutely. But we still can't really find that, that, that cause. Given that 70% of unknown factor, so it goes to show there's still some linkage between so-called diet, maybe in so-called the new modern diet, we're talking about the trans fats and so on and so forth. Lack of physical activity, yes. Obesity is a big crime now. Mm -hmm. We have got almost 49% of women who are obese. And when you're obese, pre-menopausal or after menopause, the risk of breast cancer increases. Mm. So we try to encourage women to identify these preventable factors like obesity, but it takes time. Mm. So obesity is the number one factor, in fact, at this point of time, whether it is for breast or colorectal or even ovarian cancers. And those topics have been covered in today's forum. Mm. So okay. the known factors are there, but it takes a journey for women to say, look, uh, I'm at 848, I'm obese, I need to lose my weight. It takes years for them to lose your weight, mm. and in that time, cancer creeps in. 